Um, I'm Madison Weber. And I'm Phil, and we are the hosts of the Statesman Sports Desk. And so, yeah, we, we got a couple of our guests here. We'll, we'll start with Caden. Do you want me to like, introduce myself? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Caden Jolly. I'm from Grand Junction, Colorado. I'm in my last one or two semesters, well, last two or three semesters of uh, my undergraduate um, studying exercise science. Uh, I served a mission in Barranquilla, Colombia, um, and yeah, I love love Utah State. I love Logan. Love football. All Thank right, you. Tanner. My name is Tanner Jolly. I am Caden's younger brother, <laughs> <laughs> little brother, <laughs> but I'm slightly taller. Oh, <clears throat> okay. And I am a freshman at Utah State. All right. Uh, what? Tell us what kind of athletes you guys are, your positions, that kind of thing. Uh, athletes that try really hard to be athletic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I play defense. We both play defensive end, actually. Oh, wow, uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Um, we played in, played in high school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, take us back. How long have you guys been playing football? Have you always played on the same team together? And wh- what was that like growing up with football? <clears throat> well, um, I started playing football in fifth grade. And me and Caden were never on the same team because he's two years older than me until we got to high school. Okay. Um, in high school, Caden was a senior and I was a, a sophomore and I managed to get myself on the varsity team with him so I was his backup mm. so whenever he was tired I would I would go in for him which rarely ever happened <laughs> <laughs> you're like thank you <laughs> yeah yeah I mean everyone knows in high school if you're if you're good you go both ways and so I, I got tired a lot actually <laughs> yeah right uh, I just remember I was always cramping on the sidelines because he's just running running sp- around for, for two hours or whatever yeah um yeah I uh I also played, um, we played, yeah, we played at the same school. He was always, always younger than me, always never on the same team. And um, he, I always felt bad because his team was always worse than mine. Uh-uh. Like, uh, my team was always good. I always had, like, good, like, me and my friends, we were all, like, su- we were all, like, good, solid, uh, solid team. And then his teams, they were always bad. Oh, no. I always felt so bad. Was that probably because, like, the quarterback situation was different, the skill athletes, you know? Like, well, what do you think? I think we just had just like a lack of players. Gotcha. Yeah. Like one year we barely like filled out a team. Oh wow. Um, uh, we had like fifteen dudes. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, we just didn't have very many just skilled athletes. I guess. Yeah, that's gonna drain you. So I mean, let's take take a step back. I mean, you guys said you're from Grand Junction. You guys went to Fruta High School. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we talked prior to the podcast what was that what made that decision as far as like oh i want to go to fruit instead of grand junction high school i don't really remember i think mostly the people that we were associated with went to fruta um but as far as like our football team it was kind of like a 50 50 split gotcha mm-hmm. going from middle school to high school as far as who went to fruit and who went to grand junction and they're big rivals uh, yeah that's what i assume yeah i kind of didn't want to go to junction it's just kind of I don't know. Just you picked your side. <laughs> yeah. I picked my side, yeah. yeah. Fruit, fruit is just a better school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Tell us I'm about not, Grand Junction. Is it a fairly small town? What was like growing up there? Um, Grand Junction, it's it's a fairly small town. Not super small. Um, there's still a mall and, and a Target. <laughs> wow. <something laughs> the big, big, yeah, big city things. <clears throat> yeah. Um, no Costco, though. Yeah, oh, okay. We got that on them. Yeah. That's that's true. Um, growing up there, it's there's really not much to do besides hang out with your friends, and we live right by um, this big, just like monument. They call it the monument. It's just like a big kind of mountain mm-hmm. where you can go hiking and um, drive around. So you'd spend your time doing a lot of outdoor things. Uh, me and Cadence would spend our time mountain biking with our dad. Okay. A lot growing up. Yeah. Um, and just like enjoying the the outside, the the rock and the, the desert vibe, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So was football pretty big in your in your whole family? Is that like 
you know, in a lot of small towns, it's like everyone goes to the football games because right. that's oh, something yeah. to do. Was that similar? Yeah, I mean, I would say compared to Logan, like it's similar to Logan in the fact that there's, it's like a lot of beautiful outdoors things to do. Um, but it is a, the Grand Valley, which is consists of like, you know, Grand Junction, Palisade, Food, or like the uh, that whole area. It's kind of like one. It's honestly just like one city, pretty much. Um, the it's quite a bit bigger than Logan, I would say. Mm. Um, and they've gotten like a lot of stuff since we since we left. Like they have like a Dick Sporting Goods now, and like mm, okay, like stuff that we never had, um, which is which is cool. Um, but yeah, I would say that the, the, the football games were pretty big, especially like the rivalry between like Grand Junction and Fruta and, mm-hmm. and like any playoff games that, that Fruta or went to or any of the other schools that they went to. I th- I'd say there's, it was pretty big. Yeah. I wanted to ask as far as like playing in high school, what positions did you guys play growing up? Like, were you always on the line? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> in my, uh, in my team, I was always a pulling guard okay and like a defensive tackle gotcha. I was in middle school and then once I got to high school I became um, a tight end and a defensive end um, and then I they switched me back to tackle because apparently I can't catch <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got strengths yeah. it's very apparent actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, How about you, Caden? Yeah, playing high school. What positions were you playing? Yeah, in high school I played defensive end um, and tight end. Right. Um, I was a blocking tight end, but I would go out for passes every once in a while. It was like nice because nobody assumed I was going to get a pass. And then so I better, better like hands than open. Tanner, huh? Yeah, yeah. Except for like one pass, I was just like, I remember I, I have historically bad ankles, kind of like gotcha. I would just roll my ankles like in lacrosse. I, and uh, football, I remember I rolled my ankle so bad in pregame one game. Like, I literally was, like, on crutches for, like, oh two days. It was, so, it was terrible. And I was just running straight down the field, and I just turned back to catch a pass, and I just destroyed my ankle. Right before a game. That's so tough. that tells you a bit about how athletic I am. <laughs> it's gotten a lot better, though. I'm working on it. Right on. That's good. That's good. Um, all right. So we'll, I'm going to highlight some of your high school stats because – that always makes you feel good, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then I want to go into talking about what it's like playing on a team together back then. And even, like, just as siblings, f- siblings fight, right? <laughs> so it's it, it's not always the no, best no. thing, right? It's not always the best thing to be on a team together. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, but I'm going to shout out some stats here. Um, we'll start with Caden. Um, earned Colorado Class 4A first team All-State honors as a senior and second team All-State honors as a junior at Fruita Monument High School. Um, named 4A Pioneer League Defensive MVP. Earned first team All-Conference honors as a junior and a senior along with being a team captain. Three-year starter and four-year letter winner. Um, 177 tackles, 16.5 sacks, and 30 tackles for loss to go along with four forced fumbles, seven fumble recoveries, and two defensive touchdowns during his prep career. Also blocked two punts and one field goal um, and graduated with a 4.1 grade point average. Whoa. Also playing lacrosse. Wow. Very impressive. That does make you feel good. It, <laughs> that's what we're here for. Yeah. We're here to make you feel good. Um, Tanner earned Colorado Class 4A first team All-State honors as a senior and second team All-State honors as a junior, um, named Pioneer League Lineman of the Year, recorded 44 tackles, which included four sacks, nine tackles for loss, following your senior season in 2020, also recorded 12 quarterback hurries, one forced fumble, and one fumble, fumble recovery, had 43 tackles, including two sacks and eight tackles for loss to go along with three forced fumbles and eight quarterback hurries as a junior. So... With those kind of stats, and uh, you mentioned that you were, you know, kind of um, there for backup for Caden, but what what's it like playing together um, the sport that you love and then doing it together? Well, um, growing up, I I think me and Caden had a kind of a rough relationship. I was always kind of the punching bag. <laughs> it happens. Caden <clears throat> had a little bit of anger issues. <laughs> um, but I think once we started playing – together whether it was lacrosse or football we found something that we could work together in and like I feel like we got closer and we became more instead of like I was the punching bag like the other team was the punching bag because in lacrosse especially we 
uh, we were both um, starting. I was starting as a sophomore, and he was starting as a a, a senior. Um, as, and we were both defenders. So we grew closer just um, playing football and, and just the sport. And I think just ever since then, just our relationship has just slowly gotten progressively better to where, um, like, I no longer want to punch my brother no, so much. that's good. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Katie, would you like to comment no, on that? <laughs> oh, he's right. It was, it was definitely got less annoying the older we got and the more similar I realized we were. Oh. Yeah, that's good. So coming from those stats and, you know, having really successful careers in high school, kind of like big fish in a small pond maybe to coming to a D1 college, what's it like transitioning into college football together and individually transitioning into that team? Well, um, coming from high school, I never really thought I was like good at football, but everyone else did I was just kind of whenever I'd go on the field like uh, just a switch would flip in my brain where I didn't really remember what happened but I just would perform really well um to where um it was it was an interesting adjustment coming to college especially taking a two-year break to go on my mission um and then coming back I only had like five days before football practice started after my mission. Um, and I certainly think the adjustment could have been a lot harder, but I think God was, was helping me out. He was blessing me to be able to just have some strength in my uh, just, just body after not really working out super hard for two years um, and being able to get back into it um, fairly quickly. It's It's certainly a lot more intense than, than um, high school football, but I I do think there is just uh, a lot to be learned about just becoming more disciplined and um, just becoming a better person in general, because that's what the main thing uh, the football teaches me is just how to become just this amazing person. Hmm. What about you, Kaden? Um, well, I... The adjustment was kind of weird, and I honestly, I was never totally sure I wanted to play football in in college. Um, and by the time I kind of decided, <clears throat> by the time I kind of decided, it was like my end of my junior year probably, and like most guys were like already recruited by them then and things like that. Um, but I was like, well, this is like if I want to do it, like it's going to be a lot of work. I don't want to go like to a D2 or anything like even if it's at a walk as a walk on which I am um I want to go like as big as I can because it's like that big of a time commitment so I'm like I want to you know I want to experience it for what for what it is and as big as it can be um but as far as like high school preparing me for high school football preparing me for college football I feel like not at all <laughs> <laughs> my D-line coaches were literal fossils they were so old and i love them to death i hope <laughs> i haven't talked to them in a while i hope they're still alive <laughs> um I, there's one guy he's never gonna die i know it. He's, he was like the d court and he's, coach, he's ancient, coach right? ross he's like shout out coach ross yeah he's just a crazy guy they could be watching <laughs> could, could be could be <laughs> um no but they were just so old and so like all the techniques that we do in college are so different mm. and like i'd never like even touch them at all like before like before I was I was a good player because I just you know I tr I tried hard and I you know didn't give up on plays and 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 you know I did what they asked but getting to college is like a totally different game mm -hmm. and it was really hard the adjustment was really hard especially coming from I was like on my mission and then for a year and then COVID hit so I just came home um from Columbia and then I had to go um, well, I had to decide whether or not to go and, like, serve my, serve the rest as, like, a apartment Facebook missionary, mm -hmm. which I'm not hating on any of them. I think that would be incredibly hard, and I have a really good friend who did that, and I infinite respect. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I couldn't do that. I don't think. I was already going crazy as it was. C I couldn't just mm -hmm. be cooped up in my apartment with another with another guy. I gonna, <laughs> we would have would have been bloodshed or something. <laughs> yeah. So I decided to come to, to to college, and Tanner was actually getting more recruited than 
recruited than me. Um, it was more just like we were trying to get walk-on spots at Utah State, mm-hmm. and we were going back and forth with some of the coaches and the director of player personnel at the time. Gave Tanner a preferred walk-on, and then he was like, okay, I'll get back to you about your older brother. Um, and this was uh, about a year after – this was like halfway through my first year of, of – of college that we were talking to him because Tanner was getting ready to go on his mission. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, we'll get back to you. And then, so they, they did have a spot for me eventually, like after fall camp, they, uh, I was able to join the team and stuff. Um, but getting there was like shell shock for sure. Mm-hmm. Cause it's so different from high school. And also it'd been like three years since I'd even thought about football, which is my fault. I should have been, you know, training more mm-hmm. football instead. I was just like lifting and, trying to get big you know because i was like that's what makes a good football player no no all those big guys are not athletic at all mm-hmm. um so yeah it was just i've learned so much just very grateful for it i'm very grateful like tanner said that you know our heavenly father gave me the opportunity to even walk on and experience this even though like some days i'm you know less than grateful for it i i, I always remind myself that this is what i wanted and it's been you know, I I wouldn't change it for anything. It's very, very beneficial. All the stuff I've learned is incredible. Yeah. So uh, Coach Anderson has said on numerous occasions, faith, family, football, right? Or like his his focus is, um, what was the decision like to go away for two years instead of just chasing the D1 college football dream right out of high school? And you touched on this a little bit, but that must have been hard to take two years away from real training and then try and give it your all once you come back yeah um it was it was a difficult decision but I knew just deep down in my my heart that I needed to go serve a mission um and on my mission I I met people that I think if somebody else were to have met them they wouldn't have been able to come unto our heavenly father um and I think just some of the promises made um, to me just where, like, like, or just having trust that God would help me get back in shape after, after the mission. Because I think that's what everybody uh, worries about is just, like, losing all your football, all your everything. But, and I've only been back for about five months, four months I think I'm a way better player, even though I never really um, practiced football for two years. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of it just was certainly help from from my my heavenly Father, and a lot of it just muscle memory as well. Um, after stepping away, you don't really lose a lot. Yeah. No. Yeah, I was always. I think Tanner always wanted to play football in college more than I did not to say that I didn't but he was just more decided about it and I was like I don't know I I just was like it's it's a lot of work and I don't know I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to go with it and um, I wasn't like my dream was never to go to the NFL or anything Um, so I think that was part of the reason why I was like I don't know if I really you know want to go play in college um because I felt like that's what guys did who had that those aspirations um but I mean I just love the sport and I I just loved like the kind of the glory of of football really Mm -hmm. um but I will say as I have been here um this is my third season I've learned to really love the game more than the glory because I have been on a scout team for three years I don't get any glory and I still love it and I still do it and it's because I've learned to love the game and um, maybe that's one thing I needed to learn is just learn to love the game of football obviously you know there's things I you know I hate hitting my head and things like that because I'm always like oh this is not good for me but (laughs) I I, as a whole I there's just such a deep love for the game and doing hard things and doing and being consistent and uh, consistency is, is a big thing that I always want in my life. Yeah, that's great. 
I don't know if I answered your question. I kind yes. of forgot what your yes. question was. No, that was great. Right. Um, and Defensive Scout Team Player of the Year, might I add. Yeah, so that, yeah is... that was really nice. That was a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, I guess inter, <laughs> intra-family, like uh, intra-team glory, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that was really nice because uh, I was working. I was I was giving – I always gave it my all. I, would, I still do. And last year I was just – I've – there you get scout team player of the week you know some people on defense offense special teams mm-hmm. right and just to like kind of keep the guys you know morales up i'm sure just because like scout team sucks mm-hmm. like you, you get yelled at for doing good you get yelled at for not trying like it's hard um but yeah when i got that i was like it felt good it felt like validating mm-hmm. um you know i'm still i'm still waiting for my my opportunity but it was very validating and nice to to have that little taste of uh, just like that that team team glory, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. So, shifting gears a little bit. Yeah. So, what we you know we kind of did some research on you guys. We're not gonna lie, we were going on through your twitters and stuff. As you should. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, to get a little little uh, feel for what we're going into. But yeah, we saw a lot of your mom loves to tweet a lot about you guys, and we saw a lot of heartfelt messages and. She's very such- proud very proud of her two boys um and she kind of i think called the momager is what we saw <laughs> yeah she called yeah tell, tell she, us about the momager yeah, who is the momager like, well, tell us about her i mean i feel like she's like our football manager but she's like our mom so she mm-hmm. called herself the momager just because she's like the she without her we would not have been able to get like any walk on any preferred walk on spots anywhere or any sort of college football like she was the reason that we got there. She like figured it out. She's very she's one who will systematically figure out how to get anything done. <laughs> and uh It's impressive. Yeah, she's the reason that we we got on the team. So she's <laughs> you know, obviously like she's our mom, but she was our football manager. Right. You know, she was I wouldn't I wouldn't say she pushed us, but like once we kind of made up our mind she like didn't let us forget it she was gonna make it happen Mm -hmm. i want to continue with that but i'm gonna read something from twitter from x sorry um that tanner posted a letter that your mom wrote you that your momager wrote you um about your recruitment process um i won't read all of it um but did make me tear up (laughs) Um, I'll read a part of it, though. She said, I remember how out of place you felt. I felt defeated, and so did you. However, this is what made me most proud. This experience didn't defeat you. It lit you up. So I want to hear more on that. How you said she's the reason that you're here playing college football at Utah State. I want to hear about more about that and, and how she made it happen. Well, <clears throat> first off, I want to say I love my mom. She's awesome. Shout out to mom. She's always uh, supported me and my brother and everybody. <clears throat> she always pushes us to, to just be the best that we can be. Um, but touching on just how she helped, I was never, I have a really just a hard time just like focusing on on tasks and especially just like, just things that um that are important because i get freaked out and then like my brain just shuts off and i just get super anxious um so my mom kind of just helped me through all of that she a lot of the the twitter that i was posting was done by my mom <laughs> um and a lot of the messaging coaches back was done by my mom with my <laughs> approval. <laughs> she being like, "Is this good? Is this a good thing to say?" I was like, "Yeah, that's, <laughs> it looks great." Way She's just way it. better at like checking it. I think yeah. Twitter can be a little overstimulating, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we just kind of avoid it a little bit. Right. Obviously, I mean, like I'm on there sometimes, but my mom's really good at checking it, and mm-hmm. and she'll be like, "Oh, a coach messaged you." I'm like, "Oh, thanks, mom. I'll check it out." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and she just figured out how to, I guess, play the game because she figured out that call it, getting recruited doesn't matter. Like, really, like you could be really good, but if you don't know how to play the, the game, or play just how that what they're looking for, then, um, like, there's no way that you get any sort of offers. 
Um, I had a few offers uh, from other places, but ever since I was little, um, I just knew that I wanted to go to Utah State. I don't know why. Um, I think just the legacy and uh, I just always felt that I, I wanted to go here and uh, whether it was like a scholarship or a walk-on, I'm a walk-on right now. So um, I think just being here is just like kind of a, a little kid's dream come true, I guess. And mm -hmm. that's all due to just my mom helping me out. Um, like without her, like I literally wouldn't have been able to do anything. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Besides, like, play football, that's it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and you saw that in, in this letter that your mom wrote to you. You know, she she talked about how, it, was it a camp that you went to here at Utah State or a recruitment event, right? And and she said that, you know, it it was hard seeing everybody else and how they were playing the recruitment game, right, and, and standing next to them, that it was hard to see that. But, but your mom is obviously super passionate about this, and she's an Aggie alumni, right? So yeah. I want to go into that, this, this family, deep family legacy that you guys have here at Utah State. Tell me about that. Who from your family has, has gone here besides your mom? Uh, our parents actually met here. Oh, okay. Um, my, mo yeah, my mom obviously went here. My, my dad went here. Uh, my aunt went here. Um, my grandpa went here. I don't think my grandma did. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, my, I, I'm sure some other people did back there. And I know, obviously, my great-great-grandpa um, went here. And, and yeah, so we got, we got a, lot of, a lot of blood coming through Utah State. You know, it was nice because we could get, like, the legacy scholarship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And pay a little bit less for school because out of state is way expensive. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I feel that. Yeah. But, yeah, so with such a rich family history here, does that make it feel different going to Utah State, knowing that, like, not only your parents but your grandparents and great-great-grandparents, like, just so many people here before you have, have gone to Utah State, um, and it's obviously influenced their lives. So did that mean something more for you to come to Utah State? I think it just kind of feels like home, mm -hmm. um, like a home away from home, I guess. I, I think – I think uh, just the Jolly Blood is just attracted to to Logan, Utah. Um, <laughs> I think my mom was born here. Oh wow! My, my grandpa, before he passed away, was uh, the Logan High School football coach. Oh okay. So deep um, roots. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, and I didn't know that until we like they came up here and we toured it, and and my mom was like, "Oh yeah, this is where I was." Like born and this did is where we lived. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I did your mom kind of sway you a little bit with that, or as far as like, would, I mean, you guys knew, you know, I know Tanner kind of said that it feels like home, but mm -hmm. like, you guys had, you know, different options. What really drove you here? I mean, I kind of decided school first and then football. Gotcha. Um, I was like, because in my head, I was like, yeah, like, I mean, I had a. I had a pretty good high school career, mm -hmm. but everybody knows that college football is a completely different, almost like a different game. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, I wasn't really banking on that because I always did good in school. I always enjoyed um, different classes. And so I was like more, uh, made my decision academically first. And then I was like, you know, uh, and then I was like, well, and I bet I could walk on at Utah State. So this is perfect. I'll just go here and try to walk on. Mm. And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, then then that's fine. Uh, you know, I came here for the school too. And when I, yeah, we, I toured a couple other schools. And when I just came here, the campus and Logan, it just, it, it, I don't know. Yeah, it just feels, feels like home. Feels, feels good to be in Logan at Utah State. Right. Yeah. Feels right. I kind of want to jump back to, uh, you know, the family tree here. And, for, you know, from our research and what we've seen, is your, is your great-great-grandfather that wrote The Scotsman? Yes. Yeah, isn't, isn't that crazy? Tell yeah. us more about that. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, um, well, um, our great-great-grandpa, we didn't know him. Mm, right. But we, we did our, uh, our research on him. And all the things we read was that he was just a very happy, he was a jolly guy. Wow. It all makes sense. His last name wasn't jolly, though. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, it was the other side. Ebenezer John Kirkland. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ebenezer. Wow. What a yeah. what a what a ja- what a chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Back then the names were crazy. Yeah. And he just loved singing and everything to do with it. Him and his uh, family created like a, a pioneer band, and they would go travel around Utah, wow. uh, sing to people. He loved leading people in song. So he'd just mm-hmm. gather groups of people and just start singing. Um, and I guess that's what kind of inspired him to be like, I want to like make my own song to like lead, lead people. And then he created the, the Scotsman. And that song we sing every football game, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, how does that feel? You're on the you're on the field, and you hear people, and obviously this is like every event we hear the Scotsman. Everyone knows the Scotsman. Right. So how does that feel being on the field and be like, oh, like my related you know relative made this song? <laughs> I mean, it's really cool, especially that like people are so fond of it. Not just that he wrote it, but but people like really really love it. And I remember when I was first, like, showing a video of the Scotsman, like, before I was, like, in high school or whatever, my parents were telling me about Utah State, and I was like, this is kind of weird. What are they yeah. What are they doing with their arms? What are these lyrics? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what does this even mean? But it's, I mean, I've grown to absolutely love it, uh, and it probably comes from just that it's at the events and, you know, kind of make that association with, with football and singing the Scotsman and and it's just it is a just like a rich uh it's a rich song I don't know it's like a nice it's a nice little tune I I, I don't know how to put it <laughs> really makes you feel the Aggie pride yeah right? somehow especially when you're like milking the cows or whatever <laughs> yeah. you're like, I think we are an Ag school yeah. we are an Ag <laughs> yeah. school absolutely yeah. yeah yeah I mean he wrote it in 1918 over a hundred years ago mm-hmm. and and it said that he performed the song at countless sporting events here at USU yeah so every time he would come back to visit kind of as like an alumni it was kind of tradition for him to be asked to to lead everyone in the Scotsman um you know, at, at football games or basketball games or, or wherever. Um, when he came back, he would he would uh, lead everyone. It was very special, I'm sure. Yeah. That's amazing. That's incredible. As we're kind of wrapping up here, I just want to hear from, from each of you guys, and we've touched on parts of this, but if you'll just – how does it feel to be in Maverick Stadium under the lights with 20,000-plus whatever fans, being able to do it together with – and thinking about your family legacy, thinking about your great great grandfather leading that crowd of thousands of people. So, what what does USU football mean to you guys? Um, I don't know. It's just amazing. I never thought that so many people could just gather around from like a small city in in one small area, um, and like as they they've sang the yagi fight song the the scotsman i've just i've listened to it and i I can't help but like feel connected to my great great grandfather that i never really knew but i just i just feel like a deep-seated like connectedness and just kind of a love towards towards just like my family and how grateful i am to just have a family um and it's just it's certainly something just amazing that you can't really rep replicate anywhere else and i'm just super grateful to have the opportunity to even just stand on the sidelines i'm not really playing um uh but just watching my teammates play uh and then telling them just great job like after after they have a great play is just something that i really like i really like supporting my teammates um that's certainly something to that i look forward to it's awesome yeah, I mean, it is incredibly special, and it does add an extra element. Um, I think it, football in the Mav would be special regardless, but it just adds a little extra um, cherry on top, per se, um, that our grandpa, or great-great-great-grandfather, wrote um, wrote the song, you know, the song that we sing at everything. Um, the song that just, like, I don't know why, but it hypes everyone up. They <laughs> they love it, and I'm like, you guys li- like the lyrics. It's not really like a hype song, but it just gets everyone like just just going, and it, it's it's great. And I've really learned to to just look forward to to hearing that at every game, and uh, just like Tanner was saying, like I um, I just love supporting my teammates because um, we don't we don't really play yet. 
Um, um, I did get in one game though against Idaho State. That was very fun. Yeah. Um, but just being hype, being there for our teammates, um, you know, just watching them succeed is really, is really cool. Cause like they've, they're, you know, they're like, they're my brothers. Okay. Well, thank you so much guys for coming in. It was so great to learn more about you guys, about your rich family history, um, about Ebenezer. We love all of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, make sure you follow along on Twitter at Statesman Sports and you'll find more about the Jolly Brothers and USU football on USUStatesman.com. Thanks guys. No problem. No problem. Go Aggies. No